From an artist's point of view, ordinary life is not very interesting. The phrase ordinary is about the surface of something. It refers to how things are organized, what they look like, and so on. Ordinariness is not really interesting. Portraying ordinary life, ordinary reality, is in fact uh, quite boring and does not make sense to me. Life and reality are complex, unique fascinating. I believe that the audience for art is not interested in seeing the ordinariness of reality. They are searching for the experience, the extraordinary, a conflict, a crisis, an imbalance, something that is beyond rational understanding. Through art, they can find the extraordinary in the ordinary looking reality. It is not that ordinary life is boring. Ordinary life is fascinating, full of surprise, full of danger, full of beauty. Real life and reality can be truly extraordinary. We just have to scratch the surface, the ordinary surface. Sometimes my eyes function as a camera. They focus on details. They close in on tiny fragments of the whole image. They also focus on shape and composition, searching for meaning, searching for the secret message which is there for me to pick up. My eyes are like a camera, are randomly following people, events and the movements. Sometimes I find the meaning in the tiny fragment of a gesture. It might be the rhythm, the direction and the shape of a gesture. I freeze the camera and stop the time. My imagination takes this moment further. There is a crisis in the imbalance. Being out of balance means being in between two safe points. Leaving the safety of balance and being in between. We are not sure what, how and when will happen. Can we hold on? Will we fall? We are trying to stretch the limits. I ask the actors to put weight on each other while trying to sustain the crisis. At the same time, they are aware of the composition. I am interested in meaning, in danger, in crisis, mini crisis, hidden crisis. These moments of imbalance might carry a complex drama. They carry the essence of some intriguing truths about relationships between objects, between people and emotions. I ask the actors to switch off the conscious mind and shut down mental processes such as judgment, prediction, anticipation or reasoning. Just keep your body moving, your body will make decisions, pure physical decisions. Every move your partner makes is a proposition for you to answer. Feel and sense the proposition and answer on the same sensory physical level.
I am often a visual artist when I teach movement. I am searching for meaning in composition, meaning in shapes and forms and the relationship between shapes and forms. I don't use the word meaning in intellectual terms, rather as a career of substance, a reason, a communication between the shapes and forms. I ask the actors to shape their bodies as if they were sculptors working with clay or stone. I ask them to be the performer, the choreographer, sculptor and the spectator at the same time. When the actors feel that the composition has arrived at catharsis, the shape they have created with their bodies is meaningful, dramatic and suggestive, interesting and intriguing. They freeze the moment. the true meaning of composition. Compositions can carry complex messages, they can carry drama, conflict, emotions and passion, falling and failing. A composition is not merely an aesthetic arrangement. It also shows the relationship between the participating elements. 
The compositions the actors create from their bodies reflect some kind of meaning. We are aiming to create moments when the compositions carry the essence of some kind of drama, conflict or crisis. I ask the actors not to decide beforehand what the compositions will be about. In this work, intellectualizing is banned. Miming, illustrating, pretending, projecting is prohibited. Just let it happen. For the purpose of our investigation, we will classify gestures as behavioral gestures and expressive gestures. Gestures are communicating, intentionally or unintentionally. Simple behavioral gestures carry direct messages. Go right, go left, sit down, don't come closer, and so on. We use them to enhance or substitute verbal communication. Expressive gestures are unintentional. They reflect the person's emotional state or his or her state of mind at the present. Physical performance relies on visual clues. Expressive gestures play a particularly important role in this beyond intellectual communication between the audience and the artist. So, we can look at expressive gestures through the eye of a sculptor who wishes to capture the essence of an emotion or state of mind. The artist creates a shape, a composition, in which the shape of the body she uses will reflect that essence. This work, too, is not intellectual. may move their bodies for a long time before we can see some extraordinary gestures coming through. We play with ordinary behavioral gestures first. We start with truthful duplications. 
observe intensity, direction, emotional charge of the gestures before you shape your body. Answering a gesture is like answering a proposition. It's like, oh, I'm in pain. And the answer would be like, oh, I'm so sorry for you. It's a bit trivial, easy to follow, directly readable. The spectator watches the gestures, instantly understanding the relationship, the conflicts and the intentions. This is an intellectual mental process. We translate the visual clues and make sense of them intellectually. I ask the actors to take the propositions further. It means also avoid direct, instant and obvious answers. Look at the shape only, take away the meaning and relate to the shape only. Find unexpected and unusual ways to connect. Let's hijack the gesture's original meaning and take it freely somewhere else. Be brave, take risks, be ruthless. Don't think, don't let your mind interfere with this sensory experience. This is like a meditation, a dynamic and moving meditation.
question is always how to switch off mental processes, how to enter and exist in a kind of sensory state, how to be physically present and make direct and uncontrolled connections between feeling and gesture. I asked the actors to memorize one of their recurring dreams. Their instruction is to follow the sequences with their bodies, describing with their gestures how they felt and what happened in their dreams. We keep repeating the same story, exaggerating the gestures until it becomes a dance. Blindfolding is like hiding behind a mask, helps to shut down self-consciousness. Our aim is to find freedom and comfort in this physical storytelling. At a certain point, the actors stop illustrating the story. The gestures find their real roots somewhere deep in that vast storage of information and emotion which we call the unconscious.